What up, what up, Gromies? It's your nostalgic YouTube sensei, Rasta Green Thumb. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you want to do a little more, don't forget to hit us up on the Patreon. What up, what up, Gromies? And welcome to another episode of Growing with Rasta Green Thumb. Before we get into it, I would like to give a shout out to some of our Patreons that make this all possible. Remember to share with a homie to share with another homie. In this episode, we're going to be talking about the Kyle Cushman denoting technique. This is one of my favorites and can benefit you a lot in flower. We're also going to be talking about defoliating right before you go into flower. Let's get into it, homies. No worries. I know you've been waiting for this one. First off, let's set some things straight. In flower, your top nodes are your main priority. Anything lower than that will just be a sucker branch and will become larfy bud at the end of harvest. After many rounds of flowering, I've discovered that from the starting height and upwards will be your good quality bud. Everything below that or below the first scrog net in my case has become larf every time. Now let's talk about what we're actually doing with the Kyle Cushman denoting technique. With this technique, you're only taking the nodes. You're gonna leave all those leaves that you see. We're gonna take some of them, but our main priority is to get the nodes off all the way up to the tip of the branch. In some situations, we will leave the last three top nodes. And this is because in previous videos, you can use those nodes and super crop them or bend them over in the trellis to make them fill up squares. And this is very beneficial when you don't have a lot of plants. We're also gonna go ahead and remove any branches that don't make it to the middle height of the canopy. And that's because these branches will just suck energy from the other main branches that you're trying to form those big colas. In outdoor grows, they can leave a lot more nodes. But in indoor situations where light penetration is your top factor, you're gonna wanna remove any branches that aren't the main branch. And that's because these are also gonna suck energy as well as congest the inner canopy. And these small branches would have remained as larf by the end. So we're benefiting ourselves by redirecting that energy. We also wanna go ahead and remove any of these small leaves at the bottom of any of your main branches. And these are also congesting the inner canopy and blocking airflow. And they don't get much light anyway. So it's more benefit to remove them than to leave them in indoor growing situations. I would highly advise that you start defoliating from the bottom of the plant. It would suck to take off leaves at the top and bottom and just have some sticks with two or three leaves on them. I mean, it'll work, but you can see a lot more production if you strategically defoliate. And you guys know how Rasta Green Thumb defoliates. We take leaves that block tops, block airflow, and make main branches touch each other. I've said it a thousand times. This is also how we achieve the even branch structure on all six of these different strains. We also want to take off any leaf that is facing the center of the plant. I don't care how nice it looks. If it's facing the center, take it off. And any lower branch facing the center, take it off as well. You're gonna run into a lot of baby nodes that are just developing along the branch. You can just wipe these off with your finger. It doesn't take much to wipe them right out. In the end, you'll be left with some tops that either have one node or three, and they'll look real clean and real nice. As you can see, along the branch, all the nodes are gone, but there is a decent amount of leaves still left on the plant. In our situation, we denode all the way up to the top because I have eight plants in this 4x2, so there's not a lot of room for side branching. You want those colas to be nice and straight. And since we top the seedlings at four to five nodes, you can expect to have eight to 10 main branches, and that's good for a scrub. When I first started doing this technique earlier in my grow journey, I noticed that if you leave more nodes at the bottom, they'll get tall and look like branches but it'll just be a popcorn at the top and maybe two or three buds along it. 
It's not worth your time, Gromies. Trust me. If you know anything about the YouTube or the Instagram, you know I usually end up with some nice long spears, regardless of strain. Because as you guys know, I run multiple strains every run. The only way I'm able to achieve this is with a scrog net and this denoting technique. It always leaves me with dense and tall colas. The cleaning up of the leaves on the lower branches is referred to as lollipopping. Or as Guru Rasta Jeff would say, we're just shaving these girls' legs. But regardless of what you call it, removing all this lower growth will really help with the airflow in your canopy. By the end of week four flower, when these plants are done stretching, you're gonna have some tall colas as well as some tall legs. You don't want a bunch of leaves down there blocking the air. Go ahead and fill your bowl back up, fill up your dab rig, or you know, light your joint. I'm just gonna go ahead and defoliate and denode this plant. We just gonna chill and do the job. I'm not even gonna lie, this process can take quite a while, but your plants will all benefit from this technique. This is gonna be the difference between larfy popcorn buds and large, long, dense colas. Look at the difference between one that's treated and one that we haven't touched yet. There's a big difference and we're gonna see it in flower when we have those long, dense colas. And this technique is something I would advise learning in veg when you have time to recover and see what happens when you do this. When you take these sucker branches, you're gonna notice the main branch gain some more vigor. But the more nodes you have on the branch, the slower the main branch overall grows because it has to supply all those other nodes that are coming off of it with energy as well as itself. Your plant only has so much energy. If you have 30 nodes, it has to supply 30 different nodes. If you take 20 of those nodes off and only have 10 left, those 10 nodes are gonna grow three times faster because they have the same root system as a plant that can hold 30 nodes, but there's only 10 nodes to supply. So those nodes are gonna really take off and start putting on height every day. The vigor experienced by doing this technique can be surprising to some growers because those plants are really gonna start taking off. You're gonna look one day and be like, damn, that thing just put on an inch after you do this technique. Trust me, Gromies, do it once, you'll never do it the other way again. If you ever notice, those nodes that are in the inner canopy, they always start to look kinda mutiny, or they look like branches that are re-vegging. This is because they're not getting adequate light. Only things that get adequate light look normal and grow vigorously. So let's allocate that energy where it can be best used, at the tops where we're gonna get those good buds, not at the bottom where all that larf is gonna come. Outdoor growers have the benefit of the sun and that sun is gonna fatten up that whole plant. But indoor growers, we're dealing with LEDs or HPS, which can be bright to the eye, but are nowhere near as penetrating as normal sunlight. So let's make sure that we focus that energy on the parts that are most important. After doing this Kyle Cushman denoting technique, I would advise that you leave your plants to recover for another week before flipping them into flower. You can set up the scrog right now after doing the technique, but I would highly advise that you give them at least a week to recover from you taking off all those nodes. Keep in mind, these plants just went from having a shit ton of nodes to having about 10 to 30 nodes, depending on how many you left on the branch. So they're gonna need some time to get back into the swing of things. Even though they need this recovery time, you're gonna notice that increased vigor right after you do this technique. The next day, you're gonna be like, damn, these plants are really putting on. And this is just an overview of how many leaves we had to take off. And it was a lot, Gromies. It was a lot. But there's eight plants in here, so expect some leaves to come off. And they'll replace these leaves over and over again. I highly recommend you check out our other content, Gromy. We'll teach you all about it. Catch you next time, Gromy. Peace.
But if you like the content you saw, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And hit the notification bell so you can be notified when we drop new content. Can't wait to see you on the Discord as well as the Patreon. Don't forget we're also on WeTube and Cannabuzz. Can't wait to see you, Gromy. Peace.